रोलिंग थ्री टू वन एक्शन ओफ गलत कर दिया पहले बिस्कुट खा लिया सॉरी नहीं नहीं खाते ओके ओके सिर्फ कॉफी डांट क्यों रहा है We are pretty early here today morning, but the car here is late. Look at it; it's not an SUV, it's not a hatch. Neither is it a hatch with the dinky boot that we all want. It's a proper sedan, like cars used to be once upon a time. But the car here is late to the party. In fact, it's late even to the after party. Even the after party is long gone. So wait a minute. This car is so late. It's so late that it has the potential of starting its own new party altogether. We are on board. I am Ten Hat. Welcome. The car here is late, but you are not, because right now is right about the right time to talk about the all-new Toyota Yaris. Welcome back. No, no, here, here. I mean, here. Welcome here at the back. I know it's going to be strange, but I want to start talking about the looks and the design of the Yaris from this angle at the back, this perspective, where the LED tail lamps look like they're bulging out of the body of the car. And if I move more slightly to the left here, rear three fourths, then yes, of course, I notice what you notice, which is the small 15-inch wheels that makes the back of the car look even bigger. Now, small wheels equate to greater ride comfort. Bigger wheels would mean less ride comfort. That's not a thumb rule, but that's pretty much how it goes. Moving over to the side of the car here, side profile. There's nothing very exciting happening out here, but nothing very exciting should be happening out here. It's an executive sedan. and it just does the job of looking the part the part of being a manager ki gaadi now let's move over to the front and the reason why i started out at the back and not at the front is cuz i'm not quite sure if you would like this look at it look at it all the lines all the curves all the black things converge uh, onto the center toyota badge here a tad bit little too busy perhaps and have you noticed the first time i saw the front to me it looked like thanos and his helmet well if you've seen thanos's helmet there are these side cheek skirts and look at the front of the car to the right here and to the left you got thanos and his helmet now what you would rather want me to talk about is if the dash looks bad in person no the dash doesn't look so bad photos and videos are not doing justice to the dash or the design of the car but i feel in person it's just all completely acceptable the real question is what's the quality like is it like that of etios which is flimsy tacky or flaky or is it like that of corollas i think it's safe to say that it is not flimsy or tacky of course there are no soft touch points out here it's all hard plastic but then you got to consider the segment that the car fits in so i think the answer is it's more like corollas than like etios 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 than like etios apostrophe s cut now if you will allow me to get into the back seat with you which you so graciously already have thank you very much then may i bring your attention on to a show stopper of a feature in yaris everyone and the world will now look up to yaris look up look up roof mounted ac vents which are not really vents for their nozzles uh, and an orifice of a slit out here through which pressurized air is going to come out based on the nolis principle and thereby it's going to be chilled cold air and then these flaps out here are something that you can use to bounce the air off either onto yourself at very degrees or to the guy sitting at the front now this feature is a game changer not just because no other car in this segment gets it but it's a game changer for me simply because it just plain works flat floor at the back means three people can sit here in comfort the rear seats are 60 40 foldable yes and there is a manual rear sunshade and an armrest with cup holder and the person in the middle also gets his own private seat belt now back to the front what you see is what you get a beige colored premium looking interior with piano black accents and the top end vx variant gets leather seats The driver seat is electrically operated. You get a color TFT display in the instrument cluster. Car gets automatic climate control, 
cooled glove box, power windows with one touch up just for the driver window though, rain sensing wipers, keyless entry, steering is adjustable for tilt not for reach, that's a bummer. Oh yes and the infotainment system can also be operated through a remote for that proper chauffeur driven experience. The 7 inch touchscreen display out here has a la BMW hand gestures. When I keep my left hand out here, hand gestures are activated and now I just do this gesture to get the volume down. If you can see, each time I do this, the volume is coming down by 4 points. Another thing that you can do is of course scan the radio stations by a right swipe of your hand. This song if you like it, if you don't, let's just scan it further forward. Does it work? Okay, so now it doesn't work because I did not use hand gestures for more than 5 seconds. When you don't use it for more than 5 seconds, it turns itself off. All you got to do is place your left hand here again and well this song, not really. Now it works again. Three fingers out here on the screen, just pull it down and it just mutes everything out there. With three fingers, pull it up there, the screen goes off. Just touch it here, it's back on again. Going, pressing onto the home button, I will now show you navigation is quite an important thing these days when you're going around the city and uh, when you go into the map, you can zoom into the screen and it's a multi-touch screen which means you can even rotate this. Going back at home, I want to show you a last piece of interesting thing with this touchscreen display. It's this button out here. Uh, assume that sun shining onto the screen and you're not able to see the screen well. Well, then you can press the button to tilt the screen up and you can press the other button which folds the screen. You have an SD card slot out here and you can put in a DVD disc inside. Now press that button out here by cranking up your neck a bit and it gets back to its original position. If it's not in the right position, you can tilt it down back again. Well, this car, the Yaris, is really loaded up with features including a tyre pressure monitoring system out here at the instrument cluster which is right now telling me that everything's pretty good. So we should hit the engine start-stop button and drive the 1.5-litre four-cylinder petrol engine. First thing, let's get the power and torque figures out of our way. 107 PS, 107 Fiatish Tech here, which means 107 horses, 140 Newton meters of torque. And the Yaris here comes with two gearbox options. One is the six-speed manual transmission. The other is the automatic seven-speed CVT transmission. Now, the fuel efficiency numbers for the six-speed manual transmission is 17 kilometers to the liter. And uh, for the automatic transmission, the CVT, it's 17.8 kilometers to the liter. on I have uh, automatic headlamps I have cruise control I have paddle shifters out here because this is the CVT version that I am driving of course you also have reverse parking camera altogether when you want to park without any hassles now let's talk about the NVH levels but before we talk about that I want to tell you about this HSEA technology incorporated in the windshield out here bouncing away the energy instead of trapping it all inside the cabin so the HSEA and the acoustic uh, vibration control glass together make this a cool and a calm cabin in here. The car weighs uh, 1580 kilos. It has McPherson struts at the front, torsion beam at the back. It's available in six color options and by now I sound like I am reading off a brochure which is not what we want to do at Powerdrift. So let's get talking about how the Yaris drives with a bit more tempo once again. The ergonomics are spot on. Getting into a great driving position is really really easy. The steering, it is uh, vague, it is not precise at low speeds, but it does weigh up at high speeds. However, at high speeds, one can only say it to be only fairly precise, not very precise. Now, the damping is really good and that results in great handling characteristics and great high speed stability without compromising low speed comfort. That means that if you are driving the Yaris uh, at low speeds over road undulations or uh, ripples, the car is not going to be bouncing around. Because of this firm damping, however, you will hear a loud thud when your car goes over sharp bumps or sharp potholes. Now the brakes are supremely good, the brakes are awesome, they're fantastic and it's, it's down to four discs on all four wheels which is uh, not the case in any other car of this segment. The Vanna used to have four disc brakes earlier but now it has drum brakes at the back. 
range and sweet spot is between two and a half thousand RPM to five thousand RPM, and that's where you wanna you wanna keep it on the boil between that range. Uh, if you're shifting manually at four thousand uh, or five thousand RPM, you will have some amount of fun. The CVT is just about okay for me. For low speeds or small throttle openings, uh, the CVT does the job fine. But if you floor it or drive the RS hard, the gearbox CVT just falls flat on its face for me. The engine has uh, good bottom end and it has good mid range for a 1.5 liter engine. And the dual VVT definitely seems to be working for good drivability out here. How do we sum up the Yaris then, right now? Because it's a car that is, one can say, 20 years late, and yet it is such a strong contender here today. I want to sum it up in a way where we won't forget things that we ought to know about this car. And what would that be? Oh yes, I got an idea. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to one of the most filmy verdicts that we have ever had on Power Drift. And that's because when Toyota launches a car in India, it's much like Amir Khan releasing his movie in our country. It's far and few in between, but they are all blockbusters. Nevertheless, the cast is not star-studded, but it's rather one that grows on you. Take any of his movies, Rang De Basanti, Lagan or Dangal, you get a strong support actor crew along with it, who are there in it for the first time, much like the first in segment features that the Yaris gets. The plot is the 1.5 litre engine that thickens further with the CVT transmission. The main protagonist is that black grill out there that gets most of the face time co-starring other projector headlamps and LED DRLs. Side profile is that girl next door heroine. No fancy curves, no item numbers. And then lingering somewhere in the background are the extras like ABS, EBD and 7 airbags. With a lukewarm plot, an unassuming cast and strong support actors, the Yaris here has all the makings of a blockbuster. One that perhaps may never make it to the cover page of Stardust, but one that will have red carpet welcome from all the critics. Unfortunately, the show hasn't begun yet, but ticket prices are said to be between 10 lakh rupees to 13 lakh rupees. Looking at walking into one with your family, ladies and gentlemen, please do the Toyota Yaris. Thank you for watching this channel. It's called Power Drift, a rebellious revolutionary channel for cars and bikes in India. In Kalab, Zindabad.